So we are, as usual, starting out with the news. We are then going to step on the digital scale of your website and do a segment called, Is Your Website Overweight? And this is really a response to what we have seen in the industry being a push to not reduce page count on websites. So come back for our segment on, Is Your Website Overweight? And then I'm looking forward to this one. We're going... Tim the Toolman Taylor grew up and got a job as an SEO. What is in the digital marketing toolbox for Guy and Conrad? And what makes the world go round? Money makes the world go round. And welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Teaching you how to promote, market, and make fat stacks for your legal practice. Here on Legal Talk Network. All right, everyone. Welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. As always, we're going to start with the news. And back by popular demand, request from both Guy and myself is the old-timey news drop. I love it. Um, Guy, Google I.O., search results. What's happening? So I sat through some of Google I.O. Uh, yesterday. That's the uh, it's Google's developer conference. Uh, you can go check it out. I, I encourage people to spend at least a little time checking it out. And we'll drop a link to uh, at least a couple of relevant updates. But the big thing that uh, you know, they spent a lot of time talking about how awesome their technology is and multimodal really? and showed some cool examples. Gem, it's a gem the Gemini era. It's very exciting. But you know, everybody's curious about what this impact on search is going to be. And I guess we're going to have to really, and they talk about it and, and I, I don't want to, uh, uh, cast aspersions or, um, to be dismissive. They did say a few things about it, but the headline is, is that they're rebranding search generative experiences as AI overviews. And, you know, we've been taught, I've, I've brought it up and I keep dragging Conrad into the SG stuff. Conrad's like, there's no SG results and Conrad's right. Um, but they are saying that they're out in the wild now. Uh, the SEO chatter is still, hasn't seen a ton of them yet. But as far as Google's concerned, the AI overviews are out there. And one of the big questions is, is do the AI overviews steal clicks, right? Is it zero click? Because, and there's been some illusions that it's actually increasing clicks. Users like these AI overviews and are clicking through to the website's TBD. But I will tell you, as I've told you, you can go listen to our episodes. We've covered SG a couple different times. But monitor what's going on for relevant queries in your neck of the woods. So far in my neck of the woods, it's still mostly Forbes. And we would... Forbes? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You, Forbes you, is killing it in I SEO. I'm just telling you. I until ya. you said Forbes. Dude. Killing it. Oh there, God. go follow me on Twitter. I'm showing screenshots. Ugh. Almost every best lawyers near me has got Forbes as number top five in traditional organic results. All right. Brought to you by Guy and Conrad. Please go pay someone to put you on Forbes. That's embarrassing. All right. Um, Chat GPT 4.0. That announcement came out. What came out of that, Guy? Um, yeah. Uh, similar to so this is this is it we're in the ai wars here right um and we're, we're gonna be I'm curious to see where apple lives in all this but um open ai and uh microsoft partnered up and bing and um you know there are a bunch of new there so one they're giving now this um this omni uh multimodal uh gpt away for free so everybody's got access to the new 4.0 and uh, you can still have the paid subscriptions give you some more. Uh, I think that gives, gives you API access and more um, usage, uh, so to speak. You know, and, and people keep, everyone wants to talk about AI. And it's like, well, how do you use this AI? And, you know, frankly, I, I still, I don't know how you are at land on this, Conrad, but um, 
you know, it's still a lot of the same types of things. Now, are you going to be able to do video with it? Are you going to be able to do images with it? Are you going to be able to do more advanced uh, text ideation and stuff with it? Yes. Are there a whole bunch of issues? Yes. yes. Um, is it cutting edge technology? Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. Is it doing what a lot of people think it's doing? No. You know, I, unless, uh, you know, and there was some turnover at their board, right? Um, Ilya and uh, I'm blanking on the other scientist's name who left, but two of the board members who are open AI people are gone. And there's some questions about why they left. And there's a new person on their uh, super alignment team, which is supposed to keep the AI from killing us. TBD, I guess, on that one. So can't hedge against the apocalypse. We'll let you know when that happens. You'll know. There'll be no more lunch hour legal marketing. All right. Speaking of the apocalypse, uh, local service ads. We have been bashing local service ads two episodes in a row, and we're going to make it three. Um, this, I think, is an underseen, un underreported, underdiscussed, un uh, unaware that through LSAs, there is a functionality to contact multiple attorneys, which, as Guy will tell you, is actually good for the consumer. Because now they're getting three or four different perspectives instead of just one. Um, on the on the advertising side, the thing that pisses me off about this is again, there is absolutely no insight into what you're paying for what are now three very different inbound lead types coming out of LSAs. First one would be a direct phone call, which is what everyone kind of thinks LSAs are. You're happy to pay for that phone call if it's a qualified lead. And if it's not, you can dispute it. Okay, fine. The second one is paying for that inbound for your brand, which should cost you a lot less. But as we discussed in our previous episode, we think is somewhere around $150 to $200 per inbound for someone who's already looking for you, which is insane. But because they don't break these things out, you have no idea. And finally, with this multiple messaging thing... Um, if that lead, and this starts to look like the lead providers, Google starts to look like these lead providers, or you know, I, I've been mean to engage about this, but taking a single lead and sending out to multiples, and you again, you have no idea what you're paying for this. It makes it very, very difficult to understand and realize how to optimize for LSAs. Now, I don't want to go too deep into this, Geek, but your perspective is look at the big average, make sure that your LSAs are cost effective and play the game. Yeah, I mean, I, you know. LSA stands for larger shareholder accretion for Google. Um, I called it let's screw attorneys. You did. And, you know, look, there are, as we discussed, lots of attorneys. This is not going to be a good channel for. But I'll tell you, you know, and we, and we I, you know, I think back to my early Internet marketing days, 2007 and the days of total attorneys, right? And total attorneys it was a lead gen. There's, in fact, I just saw a total attorneys ads. They're, they're owned by internet brands now. Ah, uh, by I who? saw their, their internet brands. Oh, which also owns what? Engage as well? Okay, interesting. Yeah, they own a bunch pattern. of lawyers.com. Avo.com. Hmm. Avo, anyway. right? Martindale. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but I remember, and, and they sold the lead multiple times. And we know where selling the lead multiple times goes and the consequences. And so... You know, the short, so there's, there's, I'm putting things in kind of three big buckets. Bucket one is turn off your LSAs. You don't have to participate. You don't have to play the game. You don't have to do LSAs. Great. Okay. Don't whine bucket, if you're not going to play the game. Bucket two is I want to play the, uh, we'll call it the efficient LSA game. So you opt out a brand and you turn off messages and see what you get. You know, get as much as you can. You're getting phone calls. You're not going to have the multi, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no multiple phone. They're not doing multiple phone call yet. That's coming though. Why you watch? Because total attorneys did the same thing. Multi ring. Whoever it's picks coming. it up fastest. Fast. And so then, that and so that's bucket three. Okay. Bucket three is I'm gonna check. I'm gonna. I I know my economics. I'm a big spender. I'm trying to incrementally capture more and more market share. Uh, messages on. Brands opted in. I'm answering everything within seconds. I'm disputing where I can dispute. And I know big picture all in on LSAs, my cost per client target works for my business. And I would say that the most cost effective way to do this, be, and I'm making the assumption that you are overpaying for your branded terms and that you are overpaying for those multiple message terms. The most cost effective, highest, I hate to say this word, highest return on investment and or lowest Don't cost, say it. cost per client. Your Don't lowest do it. cost per client of these models is to turn everything off other than those phone calls. 
Um, and it'll also be your second lowest volume. So that to was turning that's them off where altogether. I was going. If, so the question <laughs> becomes: If you play that game, do you get whacked because you uh, you'll disappear from LSAs? Right. In a I, competitive place, you're going to be looking at four to five percent search impression shares. My guess. Okay. And now, and you look, talk, you're in the middle yeah. of nowhere. You're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you might be able to dominate. You got a lot of reviews. You might dominate. You might be closer to 80, 90 percent search impression share, but not mate, not in Chicago, not PI in Chicago. So this is this is uh, philosophical, theoretical. We will get some data in and share it with you. Okay, we've gone too far on LSAs again. I apologize. I bet next time we can, if if our next pod we can get through the whole pod without saying LSA, um, we'll do something nice. How's that? All right, let's try. The next thing, Guy, the next major piece of news. We were cited as one of the best legal marketing podcasts. I'm so congratulations. Proud. Congratulations to us and the 15 other <laughs> legal marketing podcasts that were listed on the best legal marketing podcast list. And if you're looking for an example of how not to use AI to generate your content, Check out some of these best lists. We we will put this out there. So the reason I chuckle and guffaw is that this was either written by someone who didn't do any research at all, or this was entirely written by AI, which did a bunch of incorrect research. And I know this because uh, the, the write-up for this lovely podcast that you listen to I will read this to you. The podcast features interviews with leading legal marketing experts and thought leaders. We haven't featured an interview for a long, long time. And, we've, and we do that deliberately because we think they turn into gross pitches all the time, which is so it's just you, get, you just get me and Gee. And so the one thing that makes us a bit unique, they got wrong. Um, Anyway, it's it's. I also it's, like how they interchangeably sometimes they'll actually name a host, and then sometimes they'll just say by Legal Talk Network. So either they, you know, just they actually don't listen to the podcast at all, or <laughs> I know it's funny. I was uh, I typed in sixteen good legal podcasts into ChatGPT just to see if it was exactly, but it's not exactly the same. But anyway, you hey, you know what? Maybe we should just be grateful. No, don't be grateful. Be cynical. I will read you three other titles from the same thelegalpractice.com. One is called 17 Law Firm Marketing Books for Modern Attorneys. Another page is called Legal Legends, the 17 Best Legal Marketing Books of 2024. And next, there is 17 Best Books for Expanding Your Law Firm. And the lists intermingle, but not exactly. So this is an example of AI content gone wrong now somebody's been reading seo listicle blog posts <laughs> <sighs> okay i hate this industry sometimes all right speaking of this industry here's two <laughs> events you might want to check out we have the law firm <laughs> growth summit coming up on may 21st through 23rd so probably just kicking off as we Publish this episode, right, Conrad? Hit pause, sign up, because you can hear both more Conrad and Guy uh, through the Law Firm Growth Summit. And there's another one that's going on, uh, also coming up, co-hosted by my Launch Hour Legal Marketing co-host, Local U in Detroit. If you are in the Detroit market, this is a must. If you are, if you want to come to Detroit, no one's ever really like, yes, I'm going to put that in a city on my list. Sorry, Detroit. <laughs> but Local U, hosted <laughs> by my co-host... Geet Sakalak as Joy Hawkins, Greg Gifford, uh, some amazing speakers. It will be a good time. Uh, when is that, Gee? And uh, I might be making a guest appearance with a bottle of scotch. June 24th. We hope to see you there. Come to Detroit. Great lineup. And also, Conrad will be there to heckle and throw hats, lunch our legal marketing hats into the audience. All right. This segment we're talking about is your website overweight. And We've, we've touched on this concept a couple of times, but we're going to come back um, because we keep seeing content about not deleting content from your own website. And we want to dive deep because I think people are misguided here. This is important. Um, and we, we kind of want to make this a almost like an interview style. So I'm going to interview Conrad because Conrad is very passionate about 
content hygiene. And Conrad, why don't you start off and tell us, give us some context on content hygiene. So why is content hygiene? Can't you, you know, I have a website. I want my website to get traffic. Don't I just make more pages? What's the, what's this whole concept of content hygiene? Well, I think when people talk about content hygiene and content strategy, we are so focused on making more that we sometimes forget to think that less can actually be more. Um, and and I, I've been doing this for a very, very long time. Uh, and, and, and the reason it's so relevant, and, and anyone who's been in the SEO game for a long time knows that this is relevant because they dealt with things like the Panda update, right? There was Panda and Penguin, and we talked about luck. There are all these Google Algo updates that were all named after animals that most of them had something to do with the quality of content. And the issue was low-quality content can have a site-wide impact, which means if you have a, a garbage piece of content, it doesn't just hurt that page. That page just doesn't it isn't going to not surface. It actually is a site-wide negative impact. And I wrote two posts, and this goes back to 2016. So this is not this is not a new strategy that I believed in, like as as a as a as a recent thing. It's something I've been doing for a very long time. But there's two posts on Search Engine Land called "More Content, Less Traffic," and I I do two case studies on this of how we took a website and deliberately dropped the page count and saw an a change in traffic, but ultimately more important a improvement in conversions. And by conversions, I mean contacts leads to a law firm. And that's what really matters, right? And so in many cases, we we miss the boat and think about, you know, as SEOs, our more traffic is going to be better. There's more people we can retarget to. There's all sorts of things. But it's not really always the case. And I would argue it's not only not better, it can actually be deleterious to your site. Well, I, I think the two kind of points here that I don't want the audience to miss. You, you're you saying you got rid of pages, which said we're going to talk about how you decide to do that in a second. Traffic went down. And you said conversions went up, but you didn't just mean better conversion rate. You actually meant the volume, the number of conversions, the number of, I'm assuming you're talking qualified leads, quali- qualified uh consultations yeah. that the volume of those actually went up as well. So this is really fascinating, but it makes sense if you think through some of the stupid content that people have put out there, okay? And and, and by the way, this is going to come across as a massively self-serving segment. Um so the usual. So it so the usual. No, but this is probably over the top because I think this is a counter perspective of what many SEOs believe and preach to their law firms. But I've got the data to back it up. And we just did this. We did this This out of, I don't want to call this, this was probably an extreme example. I just posted a case study on this. This is a PI firm. We cut 77% of their pages. And what they have seen is a very, very small impact on traffic, but a tripling of their leads. So the only conjecture I can make from this, and I and I know the content that we struck, the only conjecture I can make from this, and this is not the only time we've done this, but this was the most extreme example. And again, it's a self-serving thing, which is why we publish case studies about this stuff, like cherry pick the good things. But by getting rid of a bunch of content that really wasn't about, I want to hire a lawyer right now, we have, we have concentrated, improved the quality of the traffic that does show up. And they are now contacting the firm at a much greater rate. And that has been, I mean, it's dramatic. Now, <clears throat> this took 12 months to work itself out. So it wasn't, it, this is not a flip the switch kind of thing. And it's taken time, but like, it's really, we've gone from, I think it was a 2.2% conversion rate off of organic to almost 7%. Um, sorry, to, to like, like six and a half percent. Um, and, and, and it's just, it's just astonishing. At, at, at. Well, again, I, you know, I, this is the thing to me that is we have to be, drive home this point. It's not just that the conversion rate is better because, of course, the conversion rate's better. You just got rid of a bunch of irrelevant traffic. So, of course, the conversion rate be- sure. went, went up. But the actual number of conversions, the actual number of the value metric, which, by the way, you know, you just 
flippantly said that SEOs measure their performance by traffic, which is wrong, 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 wrong. Sorry, bad SEOs? Uh, uh, how about bad marketing directors? Bad, you know, uh, um, losing the forest for the trees, maybe. I don't know. Again, you're the, the a law firm is not the, the performance objective for a law firm. The KPI for a law firm is not grow your website. It's it, not make your website bigger. It's not get traffic for more traffic sake. Right. I mean, you talk about, um, the pizza law firm, right? I'll give you so start rank. Yeah, th this is the, the pizza. I've got, I'm going to use two very obvious examples for you guys because you guys think the content is the thing. We, we have a client. It's in New York. And uh, sorry, non-client, but we did an audit of their site. Uh, they're in New York. They rank really well and get a lot of traffic for deep dish pizza because they've got content about deep dish pizza restaurants in and around Manhattan. Why? What, why, did, why would you think that that is going Especially to be... Especially because New York pizza is not deep dish. <laughs> <laughs> it, may be, it may be content around deep dish first. You're going, you're going to Chicago, New right, York whatever, yeah. argument. It well, wouldn't matter either way. But it, like, it's so obvious that that is stupid. Now, what I hear from some people is like, oh, well, that's more people that we can retarget. That's more people we can put our brand in that's front of. That's what I said, I think, on a previous oh, episode. My. And I was really just saying it to give some kind of like justification Ugh. for why... Maybe there's something of value you're squeezing out of this. But again, tell them why it's wrong. Well, it's because no one looking for a deep dish pizza just got hit by a car. I mean, the Venn diagram overlap is fairly limited. And what happens is when you start, th when, when a computer starts thinking that your site is about deep dish pizza, they think you are much less about getting T-boned by a Cadillac. Right? That's just... And that's the real issue. That's yes. the real problem is, is that... If your objective is earn business clients from people using search engines, then content that is not relevant could be detracting from your ability to do that. Again, not overall traffic, not size of your website, not a bunch of other SEO metrics that we could th rattle off that have nothing to do with anything. So quickly, because we're running out of time for our segment, Give me your process for deciding what stays and what goes. Well, so there's th th this, it's a painful process, especially so like if, if we, it starts with a very rudimentary blunt instrument, which is a site colon search. How big is your site? How many pages do you have? I, I talked to a firm at Pilma. They've got 2,600 pages on their site. I'm pretty, okay. So now we have a big fat site. I'm pretty sure not all of those pages are getting traffic, right? So we can look for traffic going to those pages. We can then look for links going to those pages. We can then look for the relevancy of some of those pages. So like, like a great example of a useless page is Mary Jones won the Super Lawyers 2018 award, right? So we've been taught to blog. So we blog every time we win the Super Lawyers award and Mary Jones left the firm, you know, three years ago. And now you're ranking for her name, but you're not because no one's looking for Mary Jones 2018 Super Lawyers award. It's just stupid. It's content that doesn't belong. It's not spam content. It's just dated useless content that no one cares about. And when you do those things and you look for those things, it'll be so obvious in many cases, this content needs to be either killed or consolidated. Right, and some of it needs to be kept, um, but we look for, we look for those things, and then you thin out the size of the site, um, and what you will find. And this was the my 2016 study. There's there's two examples. I've got two examples. Pages down one in one in one case study number two. Case study number one. Pages down 32 percent. Traffic up 36 percent. The other one is pages down 63%, traffic up 61%. So it's all, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost, depending on how bad the site is, you can look at a, an increase in traffic by getting rid of some of the garbage. And, and SEOs who don't think that part of your content strategy needs to be a regular analysis, review, and purge of useless pages, you are optimizing for the wrong KPI. And if you don't believe Conrad, I'm going to read directly from Google's search developer documentation. Removing unhelpful content might contribute to your other pages performing better. That's Google, not Conrad. So take it or leave it. And with that, let's take a break. 
And now, review from Todd Verweer, the man in Texas who has the best law firm logo that represents Texas. Check it out. It's a good one. All right. Here's from Todd. I appreciate the thought and advice provided along with the willingness to say, sorry, I missed that one. Too often, digital marketing companies will use less than accurate headlines, blurbs, or tactics to promise rankings and a gazillion dollars. It is refreshing to hear folks talk about things from a substantive standpoint, not a superficial one, and by willing to disagree with each other, yet respect each other's opinions. Now, if you will just show up at CleoCon in Austin this year, we can enjoy some Tex-Mex barbecue or maybe some Texas whiskey. I am all three. Uh, Cleo has amazingly been really dragging their feet at um, naming the speakers for CleoCon. I hope to be there. I hope to be... I'll be there. And I just got the email saying I will not be speaking. You will not be speaking. <laughs> I didn't get the email no. saying I'm not be speaking. So maybe, <laughs> maybe I will speaking. be speaking. Good luck. All Good right. Luck. <laughs> we'll let you know later on. Uh, Guy will not be speaking. The good thing about Cleo, this is not a pay-to-pitch situation. So CleoCon does really carefully select their speakers, except for not including Guy. Good Lord, man. One of the few shows on my short list that I do not miss. You shouldn't miss. They're giving Cleo free airtime here. All right. They deserve it. Well, for our next segment, we wanted to go and go into our uh, toolboxes and pull out our favorite tools because we get questions about tools all the time. There's always new tools coming out. And so we're going to hit this from a couple of different perspectives. So first, Conrad, you're a DIY lawyer. Whoa. You don't have an agency. You don't have marketing people. What are some must-have DIY marketing tools? I'm going to give you the obvious one, and it's free, and not enough people use it because they get so excited about all these tools you can buy. You need to run Google searches and see what's happening. See what's out there. See what your competition looks like. See where they're located in the city. Um, and understand what you're up against. And this is from an SEO perspective, but like who's advertising? Who's on the LSAs? What are their reviews? All this stuff. This is a ton of really easy market research that you can do um, really, really quickly. So to me, just using Google search and doing a ton of research with Google search, absolutely a, a, a vital tool to use. And it's it's our starting point. It should, it should be everyone's starting point. And I will add to that in the research realm with Meta's ad library. So a lot of people don't know this, but you can go into Meta's ad library and type in one of your competitors' names, and it will show you all of the ads that they're running. So once you've done some searches and maybe you don't know who their lawyers are in your area, I would also add Google Maps to this research. Uh, it's free to use Google Maps see where the other firms are located. I think a lot of times people don't realize, but like the distance matters a lot and where you where your physical office and where your competitor's physical offices are matters a lot. So um, if you're a DIYer, getting a lay of the digital landscape, these are some free tools that can help you do that. You have other DIY tools. On the DIY thing, I think my next most important tool that I would have and they are a sponsor, but we they're a sponsor for a reason because we've loved them for a long time. And I believe we do not have any clients. I will refuse to work with a client who doesn't use this, but it's call rail. Dynamic call tracking. If you don't have that, um, you are really at a loss to understand how people are contacting. And there is so much that you can get out of call rail. The, the other part of this, and again, this is going to sound like a call rail pitch and maybe, well, it's, it's not a pitch, but it, it's, this is the reason we insist people use it. Um, it's, it's the cost scales to the size of your firm, right? So you're not, you're not in for a mass. If you're a DIY or if you're a small firm, you're not, you're not spending a huge amount to get some really, really insightful data. And that to me is one of the small or large, you really can't run without call rail. I'm going to go with two, uh, hardware pieces. Well, uh, hardware. you gotta have some. You got to have, well, we didn't say it had to be. It's a tool. Right. It's no, a tool. Like it. Marketing tool, toolbox. Okay. We have hardware in your toolbox. I'm going with uh, a camera and a microphone. And again, it doesn't have to be an expense. Maybe it's your iPhone. You let you use uh, camo. You could tell us about camo. doesn't have to be expensive. But if you are not creating content, video content, uh, audio content, and getting that in front of an audience, you to, for, to me, that's like, 101, gotta have it. 
especially if you're a DIYer, right? This is one of those things that you yeah. can put time in and and actually generate um, effective marketing. I, I would say that yeah, yes, the 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 iPhone as an amazing camera works. I do not think. I think if you do want to invest in hardware, grabbing a mic, grabbing a Bluetooth mic, grabbing something that is going to up the quality of the audio, that's money. I think very very well spent. What mic are you using there, Conrad? This is a brought to you by Legal Talk Network mic. Um, I put on the red nose on it because I thought it was funny. Um, but I, I have we'll put no it in the show this notes. Is. This the Surrey mine's an MV7. Oh, are, there it is. We got assistance from our production crew. There we go. It's an SM58, Conrad. So um, and I've got an MV7, and I'm very happy with it. They are awesome. Uh, if you're gonna run stuff off of uh, your um, iPhone having a wireless uh, hookup is a really, really good idea. And if you're going to interview people having a double wireless hookup, so you can each have a lavalier uh, wired into or wire wired into wirelessly connected to your iPhone so you can record well, great audio. I think that's another another good move. And we'll have Adam put the uh, a link to that into the show notes as well. All right. Our next segment of our audience is I'm going to call them knows enough to be dangerous. So they're past DIY. Maybe they're still, they, they like to dabble in the SEO stuff. Maybe they're still doing some DIY stuff, but they're a little more advanced. Maybe they're, maybe they're coming to local U in Detroit and they're, uh, you know, maybe they're doing their own local SEO stuff. What kind of tools do these folks need, Conrad? If you are doing your own local SEO stuff, you must be using a tool like Local Falcon. There's another competitor that came out. I don't even know what it is because we've just used Local Falcon from the get-go. But Local Falcon helps you understand how you rank from a local perspective based on the distance from the searcher or from your office, essentially. And so that is a really, really important tool. Um, Without that, it's very difficult to understand the reach of your local marketing efforts. So to me, Local Falcon is a absolute must. So we, we use Local Falcon. We also use Bright Local. And one of the uh, things that we like about Bright Local in particular is that it also has a local finder. In addition to the pack, it'll show you where you're in the finder. So um, you know when you click through the local pack and there's additional businesses, it, and that's really good for leading indicators. Like, are you moving in the right direction, moving up uh, yeah. the finder? And um, I'm also going to give a shout to White Sparks uh, local yep. rank tracking tool. Really, really good. And you know, again, different different tools, different functions and features, different price points. Um, and finally, Places Scout. Places Scout, I say, is probably a little bit more on the advanced end. Uh, but all of these are great local SEO tools, which again, if you're in local SERPs and you're you're kind of in between doing it yourself or working with an agency, got to have these. Also really important for, as I mentioned, holding people accountable, like you're actually moving in the right direction. Yeah. What else you got, Conrad? So I think at this point, the the intermediate level, you you need to start thinking about intake management software and CRM, right? So what is your matter management software you're probably running, but you need to be thinking about intake management software. One of my favorite products is Clio Grow. It's a really good product for law firms in kind of that intermediate phase. If you want to get into intake management software, uh, that is a great place to start. Um, there are some others. There are a lot of others uh, that you can also look at, but uh, Clio Grow was originally called Lexicata. Um, and it was designed and built to be fairly easy to use. Um, we also work with Lawmatics, right? They are a, a sponsor of the Legal Marketing Podcast, Lunch Our Legal Marketing Podcast. Um, but there are others, and there's some industry specific things. I would caution if you intend to aggressive, if you are a PI firm intending to aggressively grow over time, now might be a great time to bite the bullet and get the expensive um, either Salesforce based um, intake management software, um, uh, Litify. Uh, lead docket, et cetera, th- this, this might be a good time to, to, to bite that bullet before you think you need to. And I'm going to go at intermediate level. I'm going to say you need a link index tool. You need Ooh. Ahrefs okay. or you need SEMrush or you need Moz. Um, I just think if you're, if you really want to play ball and you're not, you're past DIY and you want to start playing digital marketing ball, you got to have one of those. And um, there's, again, features. If you're looking for something that I, that is more holistic across different channels, I probably go with SEMrush. Although I love Ahrefs. 
Um, I think that some rush is a little bit more comprehensive in what they're delivering. Um, but I, I don't see how you can start to move in from DIY to intermediate without understanding some more, uh, tracking com competitive analysis, um, links, of course, uh, that's just my take. All right. Final segment. Well, cause we're almost out of time. You're advanced. You're Maybe you're a marketing director at a law firm or you're a SEO lead at a bigger law firm. What do you, what's your must haves or what are you looking for when you're auditing other agencies? Screaming what frog. Easy. Screaming frog. If you are not, I, screaming, screaming frog, frog could probably go in all three of those buckets. I think that a, 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 a beginner DIYer would drown in screaming frog. Okay, fair. There's, but I mean, basic it's technical. Crawl, it's, you, you there's, for basic site crawl stuff. Yeah. Okay, fair. It, it's the last two buckets, intermediate to advanced. It, it's it's screaming. If you're not running screaming frog, you're not really an SEO. I hate to be that flippant, Boom. but like, come on. Um, there it is. So affordable too, screaming frog. Yeah, if you have less than 500 pages, which we just already talked about, having an overweight website. If you have if you have 500 pages or fewer, um, it is technically correct to say fewer than less instead of less because that is a countable number um screaming frogs free so go grab that and, and learn it like the screaming frog is one of those things that you can spend a lot of time learning a lot about your own website and there's plenty of tutorials on how to use it but like if you want to get nerdy with your own site um that's the full body scan yeah that's a uh, i think and i'm going to ask you this question since we are really out of time now if you had to just have one what would you take? If I had to have one tool, call rail. Wow. Um, uh, because I'll add this because it can record inbounds and you guys are blowing. We've talked about intake all the time. You, it, it enables you to do that. So I can not only see there's automation involved in, in call rail, there is reporting and channel like effectiveness of your channels. Uh, it's, uh, that's, it's in call rail. And there's the monitoring and management of your intake, which is where the football gets fumbled all the time. I'm taking camera and mic. Camera and mic. All right. No camera, no mic. You can't mark it. All right. There you go. A couple tools. So, all right. Well, because the housekeeping crew is coming in to usher Conrad out of his room, we have to say thank you so much for listening to this episode of Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Uh, please do give us feedback, leave a review, subscribe, check us out on YouTube, and hashtag LHLM. Until then, Conrad agrees saying farewell. Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Money makes a, money makes a, it makes a world go round. Money makes a world go round. Yeah, money makes a world go round. Yeah, money make a world go